Our coverage continues right now with ABC's Aaron Katursky still live in Lviv this morning. Aaron, thank you for making the time again. Uh, Aaron, what is the latest on that temporary ceasefire that apparently was breached yesterday by Russia? They opened another humanitarian corridor in theory, Mike. We're not sure if it's actually taken hold. We've heard some conflicting reports down in Mariupol, the strategic port, one of the trading hubs of this country. More than 400,000 people live there, and so many of them just want to escape the Russian bombardment. There was word uh, they would try again to, to cease fire and move people out on buses that had a pre-assigned route, but we're not sure whether the shelling fully paused to make it safe. We're waiting to get in contact, but there's barely any phone service or electricity there. Food and water had been a concern. Shelters have opened in Zaporizhia, not too, too far away, to take the evacuees in and, and move them off from there. If Mariupol can actually evacuate some civilians, it would be really good news because the Russian bombardment of that port city and others is only expected to get worse. Refugee crisis still developing there at last check. 1.5 million people fleeing Ukraine. Aaron, I'm curious where you are in Lviv. What is the situation right now? This has become a refuge for many of the people that are on the move. The, the main railway station now has as many as 40,000 people passing through a day, coming from more restive parts of the country, moving on to Poland or some international border. And many are just staying here. They don't want to leave their country because they're not sure they'll be able to return anytime soon. So if they're here, the people are trying to take them in. There's a giant warehouse filled with donated items for them. Schools have opened up to take care of children. One of the most heartbreaking things in this migrant crisis that's developing, Mike, is watching parents place their children in the care of someone else, maybe a train conductor, to see them off to safety. I uh, just uh, I, I want to say as a parent, it makes you nauseous, nauseous, but as a human being, it makes you nauseous to think about. And finally, Aaron, is there any concern? I mean, clearly we don't know what Russia's plan is, but is there a concern that you could be a target there in Lviv? I mean, are you seeing sort of military positioning from the Ukrainians? We, we have seen, uh, in fact, just up the, the road from us here, there, there is a military barracks. They've built uh, uh, rifle positions using sandbags, uh, and, and that's one of several that we've seen around the city. And civilians have set up these neighborhood checkpoints that's a little more robust than your typical neighborhood watch in the States. They're, they're built up with caltrops to stop tanks, even old Soviet mines in the middle of the street, concertina wire, uh, men with guns, Molotov cocktails stashed in crates in a ditch. And, and so people are taking the defense of their own neighborhoods into their own hands. Aaron Katursky, live in Lviv, Ukraine this morning. Aaron, thank you so much for your great perspective on what's happening there and stay safe. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mike.